Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Daniel Amstutz. I'm from the Town Planning and Community Development Department. We will be starting in just a minute. All right, I think we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, again, my name is Daniel Amstutz. I'm the Senior Transportation Planner for the Town of Arlington. This is a public meeting about the Safe Routes to School Infrastructure Project for the Town of Arlington for the Stratton School area. Um, I think uh, if we want to go to the next slide. Oh, I think I see Principal Hannah here <laughs> just coming in. So um, this is the agenda for this evening. Um, Principal Mike Hannah, uh, I think, has just come on to the meeting. So we'll give him a minute just to get ready. And uh, you can have a little introduction. And then I'll, I'll also go over the meeting guidelines and ground rules and so on, um, and then go over a little bit of the background of this project. And then Amy Archer here from uh, the Park Corporation will go through the majority of the discussion about the project, the scope, um, the design progress, and then we'll have um, a good long part of this for any comments, questions, discussion, um, asking you know about the project itself and the details. So we go on to the next slide. Oh, sorry, I'll go, I'll go over this first. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Um, we will be able to rebroadcast this through ACMI or they'll put it up on their, their YouTube uh, page so people will be able to see it again later on. Um, you know, if you aren't comfortable being recorded, you can turn off your microphone, turn off your, um, turn off your video and so on. Um, but uh, if you could please keep yourself muted during the meeting until it's time to speak, um, you can mute and unmute yourself. Um, we will have open, you know, questions and answer later on once we've gone through sort of the context of the project and how things have changed. And then just a basic Zoom controls. Um, there is a chat that is, um, you, can, you can access the chat, but that's just a, like the host and co-host, which is me and Amy, and then um, also her colleague, Tim. And so, you know, we can leave those more towards the end once we get to that part of the meeting and all your Zoom controls in here. And then there's also under reactions, you should be able to raise your hand once we get to that point. So um, moving on then, <clears throat> this is um, people that are involved or like agencies that are involved. Um, Stratton School is our partner school here. It's in the town of Arlington, of course. Um, MassDOT, the Department of Transport, State Department of Transportation, uh, is administering the design process and providing engineer services. Uh, Park Corporation is the design consultant in designing this project. And then because this project is federally, it's funded through federal dollars, there's oversight from the Federal Highway Administration. Um, I did want to see if um, Principal Hannah, are you here? Yep, I'm here, Daniel. Do you want to give a, a brief um, just intro overview before we yeah. get going? Yeah, I'd be happy to. I just wanted to thank you very much um, for your partnership with the school. Um, also, Amy, um, Mike Rademacher, um, and uh, all the folks who've been brought in. Uh, you've been just a great partner to the school. It's clear that you're really thinking about, first and foremost, the experience of kids and their families um, and their uh, experience and their um, you know, rich part of, of being an elementary school student is, is being able to get safely to and from school and uh, being able to do that on foot or on bike uh, has clearly been the most important thing for all the people that have been involved in this conversation. And so I wanna thank you all for, for keeping that on the forefront of every conversation we've had up to this point, for being flexible with my schedule and my ability to, to come and be a, a collaborator and uh, always seeking my input on uh, every element of um, the project up to this point. So really excited about um, having this opportunity to hear more broadly from families in the Stratton district. And then uh, also for us to be moving forward uh, with this really exciting um, improvement and augmentation to the um, experience of Stratton family. So thanks to all of you who've been a part of this so far and thanks for this opportunity to, to hear from our families. Yeah, thank you, Principal Hannah. I really appreciate that. Um, 
And I think, yeah, the school has been a great partner with this too. So as um, moving on, we're you know, getting into the meat of this about the, the project and this background. Some of you may know, um, <clears throat> basically the town applied for, so MassDOT has um, an application process to, uh, for construction funding for projects that are related to the Safe Routes to School program. And Safe Routes to School program really promotes the um, walking and biking and safety of children um, getting to and from school. And they do this through a number of different mechanisms, uh, education, um, working with um, police and other enforcement agencies, um, engine, like um, this is a sort of engineering really is this infrastructure piece of it. They work on that too. And so they run this other, this program where you, um, through federal funding that the state receives, they run an application process for infrastructure funding. Um, and two years ago, we applied for this funding and received it for this project, uh, which we'll talk about in, in more in a minute. And you know, these are different kinds of improvements that you can you can use the money for for uh, under the Safe Routes program under this uh, particular funding program. And so for this project, we're looking at, looking at sidewalk improvements. Um, traffic calming speed reduction and pedestrian and bicycle crossing improvements, which are all part of the um, part of what what the project is about. So on the next slide, um, you know, and we I should say also that we worked with a number of community members in kind of scoping out this project and starting this project. I think it was early or maybe summer of 2018 when we um, the town had met with some residents to talk about this issue about the lack of sidewalks and safe uh, safe accessibility up on uh, Hemlock Street and Dixon Avenue up to the school. And as part of that, um, we also collected data. Um, we got a lot, again, a lot of uh, volunteer help to collect some of the data. And you can see from what we collected a couple of years ago was that um, many, many students, almost two thirds of students walk to school. Um, you know, many of them get transferred by vehicle, but actually more, more than that actually walk uh, to, and almost half of them walk from school as well. Um, and then on the next slide, um, we, we, you know, knowing this, we really wanted with these projects to remove the accessibility barriers, um, install ADA compliant curb ramps, um, accessibility, I think is, uh, sometimes a major issue like on Hemlock Street because some of the, the sidewalks there have root heaves and are, are in poor shape. Um, I think a major aspect of this is installing these new sidewalks we're talking about in Hemlock and Dixon Avenue to provide that safe and accessible walking path, uh, narrowing the roadway intersections. There are some intersections that are just sort of wide swaths of pavement that make it difficult for people to navigate and, and don't make it safe for people that are walking and biking in the middle of the street with with uh, vehicles. So trying to work on that and also reduce, you know, reduce speeds by also narrowing up the widths of the road as well. Providing safe pedestrian crossings is also a really important aspect of this for when you, you do need to cross the street to get to the safe, accessible sidewalk that there is a, you know, a safe crossing for people to do that. And then of course, signage through the, throughout the corridor as necessary. Um, I think on the next slide, I think is where Amy will, Amy Archer from PAR will take, um, take up on this. So take it away, Amy. Excellent. Thank you very much, Daniel. Um, as Dan mentioned, I'm here with PAR Corporation. Also with me is Tim Thompson. And we're working through the engineering on this, picking up um, what's actually shown here is prior to where the design officially started, this had been developed previously as part of the concept design and the preparation of the application that Dan had talked to. Uh, we wanted to start with this point as something that many of you may have seen in the past. Um, we'll walk through really quickly what the scope was identified as it transitioned into design. And then uh, we'll talk through how the scope has evolved and started to advance from there. Um, so the initial application was to pick up along Pheasant Avenue where recent reconstruction of sidewalks had been completed um, or are intended to be completed by the school itself. Uh, so those were pre-programmed uh, in this project was to pick up where that meets Dixon Avenue, add new sidewalk along Dixon Avenue toward Hemlock, uh, repair and expand sidewalks along 
the west side of Hemlock Street. Uh, I'll actually point out quickly, north is to the left on this image, uh, if it helps anyone orient themselves. Um, so the existing sidewalk along the west side of Hemlock Street was to be improved and brought up to full ADA compliance with revised or new curb ramps as needed. Uh, and then the width was to be adjusted as much of that is only about three feet wide in this northern area. Um, reconfiguration, these are two of the intersections that were flagged for some narrowing of the roadways approaching Hemlock Street. Uh, so Hemlock where it curves into Dixon and Hemlock and then New York City as it approaches Hemlock itself are two of those areas Dan mentioned that have pretty wide swath there with wide turn movements that facilitate higher speed movements than are appropriate for people crossing in those areas. So those were to be pinched down. And then new sidewalk was to be added along the east side of Hemlock Street from New York City Road down to where it ends just north of Lansdowne Road. So current sidewalk exists along the east side of Hemlock, just north of Lansdowne for a very short stretch, and then it ends. So this was trying to continue it all the way up to York Sea Avenue. And then um, similar to the rest of Hemlock, sidewalks along both sides south of Lansdowne will be improved to meet full ADA compliance. So as Park Corporation got involved, uh, there were two key things from the initial scope that proved difficult or we saw as an opportunity. So the Intention to put sidewalk along the east side of Hemlock Street between Janet Road and Knowles Farm. Uh, there's a property there that has a uh, very large retaining wall that actually retains the home's foundation uh, that was determined to be infeasible to put sidewalk adjacent to that. Um, we would have needed to support the home foundation during construction and then repair and reconstruct that retaining wall. Uh, and it proved to be financially prohibitive. So that piece of sidewalk was removed from the scope very early on as we started to work through this with the town and mascot. Uh, and then what we saw as the greatest um, drawback to the initial scope that was provided for the application was it came to Pheasant Avenue, which goes to the back entrance of the school. Um, but when we did our observations in the field, we identified students walking to both the back entrance and the front entrance. Uh, so we recommended extension further along Dixon Avenue up to Mountain Avenue and then along Mountain Avenue itself up to Wheeler where uh, the school's recent sidewalk reconstructions had ended on their previous project. So I'll go through each of those um, segments in a little more detail just to give you a little more information and a better view here. Um, the intent on Mountain Avenue was to keep the sidewalk on the school side to eliminate the need for additional crossings. Uh, that also proved prohibitive based on the slopes there and the proximity of some steps and walls very close to the edge of road. So we had to put it on the opposite side of Mountain Ave. That will require a crosswalk across Wheeler to connect into the existing crosswalk, um, not currently shown here but that will certainly be incorporated as we continue to advance the design. Along Dixon Avenue, as I mentioned, we also extended from Pheasant Avenue, which you can see on the lower right of this image, up to Mountain Avenue. Um, there are some grade uh, differentials at this intersection of Dixon and Mountain that we'll certainly have to work with um, to get some ADA appropriate ramps in at that corner. There were some temporary ramps or some um, concrete ramps were put in place, but they don't meet the ability for pedestrians to cross from all approaches. So we're going to reconstruct those and make sure that they accommodate more uh, of a user path. Continuing along Dixon, uh, we would continue the installation of new sidewalk along that whole stretch as it extends over to Hemlock Street. So now we're coming past Pheasant um, there is a crosswalk across Dixon Avenue, right at Pheasant, um, that leads to the opposite side of the road, but does not have a receiving ramp. That ramp will be installed as part of the project. Um, some sight line improvements are intended at the intersection of Dixon Avenue and Pheasant. Uh, there's a very large bush that's actually partially in the roadway right away. It's going to need to be trimmed at least, if not removed, to make sure that the ramps and the sight lines are appropriate at that intersection. As I mentioned before, Hemlock Street, we're looking to tighten up this intersection. Um, 
from everything we've observed, the hemlock to Dixon curve is actually the primary movement. So just kind of prioritizing that, teeing in the other leg of Hemlock Street, making that a cleaner connection so that the movements are uh, more identifiable. Right now, there's a little ambiguity in uh, the right of way at that intersection. The um, sidewalk from there, from where Hemlock meets Dixon, passing Epping and heading towards York C, this sidewalk will be widened. Uh, I believe I mentioned as well, it's currently about two and a half at its minimum in some short stretches and three feet uh, for a good, good bit of it. We wanna get that up to the ADA minimum of five feet. So we'll be widening that sidewalk. Uh, it currently is against the right of way already. So we're gonna have to widen that into the road. We're working with the town to identify with um, fire and safety, what the minimum width is that they're willing to go to. It looks like this would be roughly 24 feet in most areas, which actually matches some of the width of Hemlock farther south, um, may have a pinch to 22 in one area. So that is likely to be accepted by fire and safety. However, it would require um, actual posting of no parking along that stretch, just to make sure that the width isn't impeded any further beyond that. Just to the edge on the right side of this image, the um, Crossing that was previously shown in the analysis at York C itself. Uh, we're probably gonna move to the middle of the stretch between York C and Knowles Farm to accommodate both neighborhoods. As I mentioned, we can't continue the sidewalk just south of Knowles Farm. So to make sure that we're still accommodating walkers from that neighborhood, as well as the York C Road neighborhood, there will likely be a crossing right at the center of this curve which will kind of help us if you put it right at the center, it gives you the best sight line in both directions. On the west side of Hemlock Street, I won't talk too much about this. Um, it's just gonna be replacement in kind almost, but bringing it up to ADA, as Dan had mentioned, a lot of the trees have heaved, they've broken the panels of the sidewalk. They are limiting the accessibility right now. We wanna put those back to the condition they probably started out in and they should be in. Um, and then the intent was to extend sidewalk between Lansdowne Road and Janet Road. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a couple of minutes. And then just bringing us all the way to the actual southern limit, this whole portion is just gonna be reconstruction of sidewalks to bring them up to ADA compliance. So right now, as we've got things designed, we're, we're advancing towards the 25% submission. We're planning to submit that to MassDOT in December. Um, we have maintained everything that's proposed that I've shown on the previous slides within the roadway right away, um, with the minor exception of a couple of about one foot wide permanent easements that may be needed on parcels um, where the abutting property is higher than the roadway or the back of sidewalk and we might need a narrow, uh, they call it a lock curb, almost like a very small retaining wall. A couple of narrow permanent easements might be needed on just a sparse number of parcels uh, to make that happen. But otherwise, all the improvements that I've shown are within the um, roadway right away. We're seeking to maintain and mimic the grass buffer that exists along Hemlock Street. So that is consistent along all of the sidewalk on the west side of the road. It's adjacent to most of the uh, existing sidewalk on the east side of the road. So as we look to extend the sidewalk on the east side um, up to Janet Road, we'd be looking to make sure it's in kind with that treatment. Uh, along Dixon and uh, Mountain Avenue, instead of doing the grass buffer, uh, some of those parcels have encroached, actually extended into the roadway right away. Um, Although technically that, that right away can be reused for roadway purpose and sidewalk purpose, there is a perceived impact uh, to those properties. So on that area, we've currently prioritized contiguous yard over the grass buffer. So instead of putting two feet of grass and then the sidewalk, which actually requires a seven foot shift in the road edge line uh, to the back of sidewalk, just keeping it at a five foot road, uh, sidewalk there. The layout, as I've shown over the last few slides, does have potential impact to a few utility poles. That is part of the conversation with the town about how narrow of a road are they um, able to accept from a safety perspective. If they can accommodate that 22 foot pinch in one or two areas, then I think we can maintain utility poles as they exist today. 
along Dixon and uh, Hemlock, but we may end up encroaching on a couple of these poles if the roadway widths need to be widened. And then we're looking at impacts to trees along Hemlock, Dixon, and Mountain um, to maintain and provide an ADA compliant walkway. And I wanna walk through how these things kind of lead to what we call design trade-offs. Um, so part of what we wanna hear from you tonight or the primary thing that we'd like to hear from the public tonight once we get into the question and comment is what is the priority for people in the town? What, what is the thing that you hold most sacred that you don't wanna see impacted? Um, generally within that grass buffer is the presence of both the utility poles and the trees. So if we eliminated grass buffer anywhere, um, some property owners, some towns don't uh, appreciate a grass buffer because it is sometimes hard to maintain as a relatively narrow strip but a lot of pedestrian users do appreciate the grass buffer because it gives you that offset from the road use. It has more of a protected feel. So one of the trade-offs is grass buffer, which allows for the utility pool and tree locations versus no grass buffer. Um, if we wanted to limit tree impacts in some areas, then the sidewalk would have to bump around them. That may take the ability to have on-street parking. As I mentioned, if we go narrower than 24, the town is definitely going to make us sign prohibited on street parking in those areas. Um, another element that we'll talk through here on the next slide in particular is um, how do you compare the prioritization of added sidewalk to traffic circulation and added sidewalk to the number of roadway crossings that are required. Um, as I mentioned, if we eliminate that stretch between Lansdowne and Janet, then you wanna have a crossing from both side streets to get you over to the sidewalk on the west side. And I'll show that in more detail in a, in a minute as well. Um, and then right away, like I said, we have designed things so far to try and maintain everything within the roadway right away, limiting to simply temporary easements that would be required for some um, slope work, just to do a little bit of regrading at the back of the reconstructed sidewalks but then ultimately there will be no change to property ownership. Um, if people would rather see more sidewalk and save the trees and save the utility poles and not give up on street parking, um, then you know, are you willing to give up a foot or two of right away on a, on a private property? So those are the trade-offs and I'll talk through uh, at least three examples where they fall within the project just to give a little more context. Um, so as I mentioned, we're trying to put the sidewalk along Mountain Avenue. It needs to go on the east side because the slopes on the west side are prohibitive. Uh, there are stairs within a short distance. We wouldn't be able to flatten this to get the sidewalk in and still maintain walls and, and steps along the properties there. Um, so we're looking at putting it on the east side. It is currently shown to hit um, at least two to three mature trees. Uh, as well as potentially two utility poles. So one of the alternatives we looked at in this area is you have a nice little triangle between Mountain Avenue, which is currently one way during your school peak hours, um, Wheeler Lane, which is also one way, and then Dixon Avenue, which is two way. So is there um, availability to make this one way along the section of Mountain Avenue be permanent? instead of just being during those restricted hours, make that a full-time thing. That would then allow us to narrow the roadway, um, likely down to a 22 to 24 foot width. It would allow us to get the sidewalk within part of the existing roadway. And then we could put bump outs around the trees. So it would allow us to maintain both trees and utility poles, but would require an alteration in circulation. And it did show arrows on the, um, figure here just to demonstrate that the one way on both of these roadways is currently away from this intersection. So one of the two would need to be reversed. Um, Mountain Avenue being a much, much longer road, it may make sense to keep that one way and switch the one way direction of Wheeler and you would essentially end up with a triangle like this. Um, but Dixon Avenue could remain two way. So that's one area uh, with particular consideration for these trade-offs. The next is along Dixon Avenue. 
Uh, as I mentioned, we are adding a brand new sidewalk there. Once you get to, <coughs> excuse me, once you get to the northern part of Hemlock past Epping, the sidewalk ends. So there's a very small stretch of Hemlock that currently has no sidewalk, and then Dixon Avenue has no sidewalk. So we want to add sidewalk on the northern or northwestern side of Dixon Avenue. Um, as I mentioned, um, quite a few of these properties have extended into the right-of-way. So the right-of-way actually goes a little bit further than where the edge of the pavement is shown today. So we've got a quick rendering of what that might look like. So you can see like a couple feet of what shows as the yard uh, has to be taken to implement the sidewalk. So part of the trade-off here, as I mentioned, is do you add the grass buffer or do you not? It's a perceived additional impact to the properties that exist there today, even though technically it fits within the roadway right away, uh, but it does give an additional buffer to people traversing the sidewalk. And this improvement, uh, whether we put the grass strip in or not, is also gonna require about a two foot take of the roadway. So this is about a 26 foot roadway today, and we're looking to take it down to 24 feet, which matches the narrowest sections of Hemlock today. Uh, and then the third particular trade-off I want to talk to before we start to get into the Q&A and comment period um, is potential trade-offs on Hemlock Street. So as I mentioned, Hemlock Street today is about 24 to 26 feet wide, varies a little bit throughout there. Um, On-street parking is not prohibited, so that basically means it's permitted, uh, and people do it in various positions on either side of the road. Um, although it encroaches somewhat into the general travel lane. So if we keep the roadways, if we keep the roadway the width that it's at and we put the sidewalks beyond the roadway, uh, then there are impacts to trees that have to happen in order to take those sidewalks up to ADA compliance. And if you see this image in the lower right, here's an example of a tree that's well outgrown the area it was intended to be in. Um, Part of it is actually over the curb line and depressing the curb line so you have almost no um, vertical barrier of vehicles if they happen to go errant from the road. Uh, it has heaved the sidewalk. It's always a little hard to see elevation in pictures, but this is about a 9 to 10 inch uh, elevation change between the top of curb and the top of sidewalk right now because of this tree. And its roots have extended enough that there isn't even a three foot passage here, which is the minimum for a pinch point for ADA. Uh, so th this is one of at least a, almost a handful of trees that are going to have to come out just to upgrade the sidewalks to ADA compliance in the locations that they exist today. Uh, and then there are other trees that we are um, planning over the next few weeks to meet with the, the town's tree warden to see even if they fit within that existing uh, two foot grass buffer and appear relatively healthy, will the construction activity of cutting and replacing the sidewalk and removing and resetting the curb, uh, will that damage the roots of the tree enough that it will compromise the, um, the health and the safety of the tree? So the, um, there's an area here between Lansdowne Road and Janet Road where we're looking to extend sidewalk that doesn't exist today. So I believe I mentioned it comes north of Lansdowne for just about maybe 100 feet, probably even a little bit less than 100 feet. And then the rest of this stretch highlighted here would be new sidewalk. So that would require hit uh, impact to two relatively mature trees, which we have images here. Uh, and then there's a third tree that we think we could get behind um, but it's very close to this driveway. So just as well, this is very steep, even just to put a single vehicle in this driveway, they're practically like into the space where the sidewalk would be. Um, they only have room for one vehicle, so they're parking the second one where the sidewalk would be. Uh, so this isn't even on-street parking, this is essentially off-street parking, but it would go um, if the sidewalk was installed in this area. So in this area, if we extend the sidewalk, we hit the two trees and we impact a little bit of what's currently being used as parking space. Um, but we're allowed to carry residents up to Janet Road and then cross everybody from the east side over to the west side at a consolidated point. 
And then we'll have an additional crossing, as I mentioned, between New York City and Mills Farm. So we would likely have two crosswalks. Um, if we, uh, if the direction of the community is that they prioritize the trees and the parking and not narrowing the road and not taking right away, then we may eliminate this stretch of sidewalk that was previously proposed. Uh, and that would require an additional crosswalk here at Lansdowne Road. So just want to make sure that every neighborhood on the east side has the opportunity to cross if sidewalk is only carried on the west side. So that's the last major thing I wanted to point out. Uh, Dan, if you want to hop back in, we can open it up to questions and comments from the public. Yeah, thank you very much, Amy. Um, I really appreciate that. It was a good um, overview of the project and also some of the challenges that we're looking at and that we're looking for feedback on uh, kind of priority and preferences. Um, so first of all, yes. So do you have a raise your hand feature? I think it's usually under the like reactions tab, I think is where it's been put. Um, I do want to first before we go to the raised hands is that there are a couple of questions that came up in the um, chat, which I think were good sort of background there are questions about background that I think would be helpful to have up front. Um, there was a question about, I think I had said maybe like we about the early stages of the project sort of who is this we? And um, <clears throat> I think my, what I recall from the timeline was that the, um, there were some parents and community members that had met with town staff in like summer of 2018, I think maybe August that were, very concerned about this stretch between uh, like Hemlock where the sidewalk ends and then Dixon Avenue and the lack of any safe sidewalk um, along Dixon to get to the school, to get to where the sidewalk picks up again on Pheasant. And so, um, you know, town staff had previously met with them and, and understood that there was um, some challenges with funding and uh, being able to build a sidewalk, uh, even though it was a short stretch, you know, there's a number of different challenges, as Amy has mentioned. So when we learned, I think, in, in late fall that this uh, opportunity, was, that, this, that this grant opportunity was available, we had already had these conversations. And I think we may have already either uh, before then or at the time had met with um, Principal Hanna about this project. And I know the Transportation Advisory Committee I believe did have some feedback on this and has done um, had identified this as as a you know a gap as a sidewalk gap uh, previously and I know TAC had done some work around here previously so um, so we worked with again the mem community members parents that we had um, met with in person and then got support from the school and then also this project has gotten support from the select board and from the town manager's office um, and and you know clearly that that MassDOT found it was a a really uh, needed project. So, so those are sort of all the we that 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 had we had worked with. So I would say this is a really community-driven project from the beginning, uh, really recognized by uh, the town and also the state. Um, the other question was about paving and repaving the road, Hemlock and Dixon, and that is something that um, we know is an issue, and that Public Works is planning to do along with this project. Um, I think. You know, I think after the project has come in, there's um, there's a uh, uh, in order for them to do it sort of on the right schedule. I believe they'd have to come in afterwards. Um, we have somebody from Public Works here who can speak more to it, but I think that basically we're trying to time these up together so that we're not trying to repave the road and then you know we come in with construction crews and rip up all the road and everything. So so that is definitely planned. Um, so I know there's a few things came in on the chat, but I want to go to the hands uh, that are up. So the first person I see is Paul. Hi. Hi, yeah. I'm Paul Gardner. I live on Pine Street at Hemlock. Um, the retaining wall that holds a sidewalk up here is along my property line. Mm -hmm. And I was just curious if that retaining wall <laughs> is going to be impacted in, in any way during this uh, project. So we had identified that as an area that um, we're going to have our structural uh, engineers look, just take a peek at so far uh, from pictures I've shared from my site walks. It looks like it certainly has the ability to stay as it is. Um, I think part of our conversation is to make sure that we uh, check clear zones adjacent to the road just to see if that railing is appropriate or if the railing there needs to be uh, beefed up. 
Um, the so we are taking a look at that, but it seems that the condition of the wall could stay. Yeah, the railing is rotted and shakes when the kids jump on it. So that is definitely a safety issue, just an FYI. Yep, I think we can certainly replace it. It's just, does it stay a standard ped rail or does it need to be something a little bit more okay. um, enhanced? Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, I did want to briefly just recognize that uh, Representative Sean Garbley is, is on the call too and is listening in. So uh, thank you very much, Representative, for coming to this meeting and, and hearing about this project. Um, I think we can go, uh, the next person I see is Roy. Hi, hello. Uh, thanks for taking my question. I have, uh, I, I don't know if it's, um, well, let me just ask. I think that both Dixon and Hemlock are streets that are very close to school already. Uh, we live on Ridge and when we walk to school, it's, it's not very close. It's like, um, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a mile or something like that. It's a good 10 minute walk and we're walking on uh, exposed road there's absolutely no no sidewalks along ridge um there's a few sections there where there there really is no um uh there's a few uh, you know hidden curves uh the cars go very fast there and uh, it's it's nothing like dixon and hemlock that are, uh, frankly are are very close to school it's like a, a two minute walk uh they already have uh, on hemlock they already have the sidewalks uh, i'm just wondering what what do you think or what do you plan for people who live along ridge and um, around this area? Sure, thanks for that question. Um, yeah, this this project, um, I mean, I think part of it was that we identified uh, quickly that this was a pretty clear gap, you know, along Hemlock and Dixon, um, that um, part of it was, was also that there's a really nasty steep slope that's right between uh, Yerksa Road and Epping along Hemlock. Um, and so, I, so this was definitely identified gap, I think with Ridge, I would just say that it's, um, there's a, um, you know, there's a lot, there's a longer section on Ridge, I think that is missing sidewalk. I think it does have some sidewalk along the way. Um, the town doesn't, it doesn't exactly have like a, a full on sidewalk improvement program for some of these streets. There are, you know, still many streets even though uh, Arlington has a lot of sidewalks, uh, there's still many streets that don't have any sidewalk on them. Um, and I think that, um, you know, that, that is another challenge we are trying to, um, I think part of this project and extending it down Dixon to Mountain is also to try to build out more of the, the sidewalk network that's in the area. So, um, so that's what I can say about that, um, is that it's definitely still a need that we um, would need to find funding for. Yeah, and I can add quickly the um, the Safe Routes to School program through MassDOT in general seeks to start with the the elements that are missing closest to the school that serve the greatest amount of the population for the school, uh, and then it tends to serve as a building off point for either the town to continue or to in the future end up submitting for an additional Safe Routes to School. Um, but each uh, Safe Routes to School project is usually capped at a certain amount. So the school has to identify the greatest need first. Yeah, thank you, Amy. Um, so I'm gonna um, move on to the next, per I'm gonna move on to the next hand that is raised and then I'm gonna, there's quite a few questions that have come up in the chat um, that have come to me. So, um, but the next person who's got their hand raised is uh, Stuart. Yes, thank you, I'm Stuart Deck. Um, on the Dixon Avenue piece between Hemlock and Pheasant Street, there's a fire hydrant and a telephone pole currently on the edge of the street. What are the plans for those pieces to be relocated? I'm going to jump back to that slide. Um, as I mentioned, there's a bit of right away there and our intent is to narrow the road a couple of feet so that we wouldn't actually be impacting those. We're trying to fit around them. So as I believe I also mentioned at one point, ADA accessibility allows you go to a minimum pinch as narrow as three feet past uh, obstruction, such as the utility pole is probably the most common element um, that has to be uh, traversed. So 
We don't need to go narrower than a three foot pinch that would likely happen past the utility pole and the, um, and the fire hydrant, as you mentioned, but we are bumping out a little bit into the existing roadway and then utilizing at least some of the space up to the right of way. Uh, as I mentioned, that could vary whether we add a grass buffer or keep it as shown here without the grass buffer. Um, but there is enough room with the slight narrowing of the roadway to get us past those, those two obstructions. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I let me see. So I have Elizabeth deck, and then I think, did you also send me, Elizabeth, a chat message question? Yes, that was me. Okay. Uh, hi, <laughs> Beth Deck, also 91 Dixon Ave. Um, and just a question, and actually it's super helpful to have that slide that's up right now. Um, it, on the, can you talk a little bit about how, when you're measuring the road, so for example, the it talks, do you measure it for the easement that's on both sides of the road and consider that as sort of the, the total available space to have roads, sidewalks, whatever? So essentially, if you're trying to figure out how to um, extend a sidewalk or add things, are you looking at taking from both sides of the road or just the side where you're adding the sidewalk? Does that make sense? Like, are you adding are you adding yeah. easements on both sides or just the one? Yeah. So for, as I mentioned, the, the overall project has a, a cost cap. So since the sidewalk can fit within the right of way available on the side of the road where it is proposed to make the greatest connection or the closest connection to the school. We were looking at just uh, adjustments to the roadway on that side. If we look at a complete balance, we would actually have to shift the road, which would require widening on the other side, which would be a very substantial cost increase to the project. Uh, and I'm pretty certain would break the cap that we're at. We're pretty much already there. Um, the Allocated cost for the project was um, almost right at the mass dot cap, and that was before PAR recommended the addition of extending along Dixon and up Mountain Ave. So uh, we are working with mass dot to see if there's any additional funding or uh, where our cost lands. That will be finalized with our 25% submission. Um, but just to point that out, if you were to balance the whole thing, as you're suggesting, you would have to widen the road on the opposite side, which would have a, a very substantial cost. Thank you. Uh, okay, so there's a couple of questions I have that are related to, I'm just gonna go to the, the chats for a moment here. So there's a question, uh, two questions basically about the one way changes or possibility, I suppose, uh, sort of Wheeler, Wheeler, um, uh, Mountain, Dixon. <clears throat> so uh, one person said, uh, Brenda says, can you explain the Wheeler Pheasant one way change possibility again? Oh, so, so I should mention that Pheasant Street is one way uh, from, I believe it's Overlook Road mm -hmm. to um, Dixon Ave. So that, and I think that's all the time, if I'm correct on that. Um, and so Brenda says, we come from Upper Dixon at the corner of Morningside Wheeler that may be affected. And then um, Amy um, says, would a switch to a one-way street option on Mountain Ave allow for sidewalks to continue from Dixon up the hill on the school side of the street? I think so, um, Amy, I think you can, I, I think you talked about that second yeah. one, but maybe if you can clarify. Yep. Um, so as I mentioned, Mountain Avenue has a one-way movement during just uh, the school peak hours. Uh, and then Wheeler is one one way away from Mountain Avenue towards Dixon uh, all the time. So what we were looking at is could we narrow the roadway stretch of Mountain Avenue between Wheeler and Dixon to allow for the construction of the sidewalk? Um, since both of them currently go if you start at the intersection of Mountain and Wheeler, the one ways currently both go away from that point, we would want to switch one of the two. So that way you could make a triangular movement. Uh, so from this point here, hopefully you can kind of see my cursor moving around there. Instead of moving in, each, oh, sorry. Instead of moving in each direction away from that point, we would want to make it so you could make this triangular movement. So nothing was, impacted by more than a couple hundred feet. Like if you wanted to come up wheel or this way and it was reversed, you would make a small 
to come around to the direction you were trying to travel. Um, the secondary question, if we were able to narrow this, could we then put it on the school side? Uh, we had not actually gotten that far yet. Um, currently, what we were um, tasked with designing so far as we advance towards 25 is to work within the confines that are there. Um, if there's a lot of public support for considering the one way there, which we would then advance that conversation with the town and their DPW and their fire and safety, um, then we could take another look at if it would fit on this side without impacting the steps um, and the walls that exist along these properties. It would be advantageous to keep it on the school side. All right, thank you. Um, all right, I'm gonna go to the raised hands again, um, to Tom. Hi, thanks. Um, Tom Abert, 73 Dixon Avenue. So for the stretch of uh, Dixon between Pheasant and Mountain, as I understand it, the sidewalk will be on the left side, the school side of that street. Mm -hmm. um, is the plan to put that in the existing road and narrow the road there? I wasn't clear on what the plan is, or is it going to be going into the lawns of the properties on that side? Yeah, so as I mentioned, along Dixon on both sides of Pheasant, and I apologize, it sounds like your property jumps this sheet. Are you on this sheet on Dixon? I am on that sheet, yeah. It's okay. sort of the yeah. middle of the block, so that on the Dixon mm -hmm. Avenue sec section there, yeah. um, so the grade is quite a bit higher. Yeah. Okay, so what we were showing along Dixon the whole stretch from Mountain to Hemlock was a two foot reduction in the roadway width uh, to get part of the sidewalk. And then it would extend three feet back towards the properties. So if you can see, it might be a little faint on your screen. We are going to share this PowerPoint on the town's website as well. So if you wanted to view it after, it might be a little easier. But I have the sidewalk here and then there's this fainter line behind it. That is the existing roadway right away. So the sidewalk that we're proposing, as I mentioned, we would narrow the road two feet. So two feet would go into the existing roadway. Three feet would go back uh, towards the properties from where the edge of road is today. It's all within the available right away. But we understand that that does have a perceived impact to the properties because many, uh, many of the parcels along this road currently have uh, front lawns that go out to the edge of the road. Right. So our property, for example, in a couple, I think two of the properties have a grade that's quite a bit higher than the street. So in our case, it is about two feet higher. So would part of the project be putting in some sort of retaining wall? How would that all work? As needed, we're looking at, uh, it's either called a lock curve is like a low, about a, up to a foot tall um, knee wall, they call it at the back of the sidewalk to make up the grade difference. Or if a very small retaining wall was needed, uh, that would be installed. And um, I know the original scope carried the assumption that there would be a couple of short stretches of retaining wall. Um, obviously we're dealing with a road called Mountain Ave and then the adjacent area, very steep grades are certainly gonna lead us to a need for that in at least a couple of places. Thank you, I'm actually um, on the call as well. I'm his wife at 73 Dixon Avenue, Caitlin Smith. Just a quick follow-up question, um, would we, have a conversation with the um, engineers in the town in terms of the wall and how that works, or is that just something the town decides and installs? Um, the the funding is coming from MassDOT, but I think that they um, are generally open to some conversation as long as what you may request doesn't have a uh, major cost differential compared to um, something a little more basic. I understand. And we do like the traffic calming aspect on Dixon and we'd love to save the trees, please. Thank you, thank you for your input. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, I'm gonna jump back to the, the um, chat for a minute. I'm, I'm just going on what I've, uh, what's come to me um, in order <laughs> sequentially. And, and actually this, this question uh, kind of dovetails with what, um, uh, what Tom was just, uh, or what was what was just asked. So I have a question from Lydia um, that says, uh, for at least some of the trees, is it possible to narrow the street only at that point? 
Would that serve as a helpful street uh, traffic calming slash slowdown point for cars coming downhill? The speed of downhill traffic on school mornings is sometimes concerning. So that is something we're considering and we discussed a little bit with DPW. Um, it, it can't be a narrowing at just a single instantaneous point where it creates um, a hazard for the vehicular traffic that they could hit that jut out, especially in low light conditions. Um, so it needs to be tapered into and tapered out of appropriately. So it has more of an impact than just that instantaneous point, but it is something that um, we've considered and we're discussing with the town as a possibility to try to uh, save some more of those trees. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, let's see, jumping back. Um, let's see. Okay, there's a very long question here. Um, but let me let, let me go to then the hands again uh, to Christine. Hi, I'm Christine Michael. I live at uh, the corner of uh, Mountain and Dixon. And some of the questions that I, I have, so I think this is, um, you answer some of the questions when you answer Tom and Caitlin's questions, just about two feet in, and I'm sorry, three feet into our, where, where our lawn ends today and then two feet into the street. But right there, there's a tree. We have some hardscaping, some stairs, um, and there's a drain as well. And, and so I'm just, I guess I'm, I'm just looking for a little more clarification on how it, like what would happen to the tree, for instance? Um, does that need to go away? Cause that's right on, I think within that, that five foot um, buffer. And, um, and, and the question of timing too, like when, like if we have to make changes because we have a sprinkler system that abuts the edge, cause we have, um, right. there's some stone there. Like how do we know? I assume you're, it, you're talking, you're this property. Uh, no, the other one. This one over here? Yes, that yeah. one there, yeah. Okay. All right, uh, I believe there were two trees along this stretch that we identified as having to be hit. Uh, it sounds like yours is one of them. Um, and like I said, if, if we can fit a three foot passable area, we will, um, but I believe we had identified that as one that would have to be impacted. Um, and then as far as timing, the, I will actually speak to schedule uh, right at the end, but this is looking to start construction spring uh, of 2024. And um, properties that abut or are impacted by it would certainly be notified in advance of that. Um, sometimes that does happen, like if the project calls for tree trimming or vegetation pruning, sometimes people prefer to have their own landscaper go out and do that uh, rather than having the construction crew um, so that will continue to be coordinated and that's, that's the approximate timeline. Okay. And I just have to ask though, if we have a sprinkler system that abuts the, the edge right now, I assume that the cost of moving that is on us as well, or is that something that's covered? If it's encroaching into the right of way for the roadway, it's usually on you. If, if a okay. project impacts something that is within your actual defined property, that would be covered. Okay. And so at this point, I should just estimate two feet from where the stone is today. Uh, so the roadway will be narrowed two feet. The sidewalk will extend at least three feet beyond where the, the road edge is today. Oh, right. Three. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay. So, uh, uh, just sorry, there, so there was a piece in the chat that was a bit more about like comments about other areas of the neighborhood that could use some some looking at. And um, the I will just say that um, thank you for writing that. We will, all of this is being recorded through not only the video and audio recording, but also the chat. So we'll definitely have, to have that and include that as part of the commentary. Um, I understand there are have been some concerns about uh, like Washington Street and other areas. Um, Want to keep going down. Um, but let me and then uh, let me go to Jacob who's got his hands up. I keep going through the chat messages. 
Uh, hello, hi, it's Jacob Rupczynski here. I'm, I'd like to go back to the intersection of Dixon and Hemlock. If we can look at that slide, I think it would be helpful. So first of all, thank you for uh, the plan. I think it's really great. And I'm glad to see so many curb extensions uh, that would slow down the traffic. And that is definitely much needed. Um, my comment, well, maybe here, so this is my personal observation. There's lots of cars uh, driving Dixon Avenue towards the center of Arlington, so down Hemlock Street, especially in the morning. And I imagine those are just people rushing to work after dropping their kids off um, at school. Um, so in order to slow down that traffic, we would basically need to make that turn from Dixon into Hemlock, uh, ideally a much tighter radius. And your plan is kind of showing the opposite. So my question is whether these curb extensions are shown that were considered to be on the other side, sort of. I know that it maybe doesn't help making that nice sidewalk flow from one street into another, but from the, the point of slowing down the car traffic over the turn, that would make more sense. So there were a few considerations here. Um, so the, the radius of this curve, we would actually not be changing. Um, those two lanes that are shown here, um, coming northbound on Hemlock and then extending on Dixon. That is all within existing pavement. That is essentially what that curve is today. Um, what we were trying to do was make the crosswalk more prevalent right at the intersection itself and shorten it as much as possible. Uh, it has a little bit of a diagonal and it's almost, um, like I said, that there's some ambiguity in the amount of pavement that's here of who has the right of way, what's the direction of travel, um, where could pedestrians be entering from. So we're trying to tee this up. Um, it sounded like you were recommending alternatively making Hemlock through and making Dixon stop. Um, generally, that is worked through with the DPW. I don't think we've had that conversation with them specifically, but um, you do usually look at whichever one has the higher volume and try to accommodate the higher volume with the through movement uh, and put the stop control on what's essentially more of the, the subsequent movement. Um, so that is something we'll probably discuss with the DPW a little bit as we continue conversations with them. But uh, just to clarify for you, this is the existing curve. And um, I actually think I have a radius called out there. So this, the radius on this property line is about 50 feet. So this center line is probably about 75. That is actually a very tight curve and something that probably should have advanced uh, speed reduction signs for it. So that is something that we can we can consider uh, in conjunction with the improvements here. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I mean, I'm glad to see that the um, sh uh, sh crosswalk is shortened. That's definitely a good idea. Thank you. Um, all right, <clears throat> excuse me. Going back to the chat. Um, there is a quick uh, a question I can answer quickly here. There was a question um, from Stuart whether these slides and plans will be available so that folks can look at more closely at the measurements. Um, yes, so these, I think these specific images uh, in the slide deck are, so later, so later on, once we get towards the end, there's actually a um, project page that MassDOT has put together where they have a copy of the plans as they are right now, it's sort of preliminary before 25%. Uh, and also um, a FAQ sheet uh, that I think we have uh, have previously uh, have put on the town's website. So you will be able to see them there and we're gonna share the link for that to, to everybody who's registered for this meeting. Uh, so they'll be up on the, either the town's website or on this uh, mass.public uh, public engagement website where you'll also be able to provide uh, there's a survey there and also commentary. So, or you can leave a comment, uh, additional comments. Um, so I wanna go to um, Eliza and who wrote a chat about the tree committee uh, is concerned about mature and healthy trees being removed and that there be no room for planting new street trees after construction, um, you know, because the, you know, DPW and the tree department has been working hard to plant the trees to minimize, or minimize urban heat island effects. So, um, is there, I guess, has there been, uh, you know, has additional street trees been considered as part of this project? I'm very glad that question was brought up. I did mean to mention that and, and uh, 
I must have glossed over it. So anywhere where a tree is removed, as I mentioned, a lot of these trees of this size were never intended to grow within a two foot grass buffer. Um, they have, and they provide shade, and we acknowledge that. And so we wanna spare as many of them as possible. Um, but in any area where we do need to remove existing trees, we would plan to replace those, especially if the grass buffer is contained. Um, I haven't heard anybody commenting against the grass buffer, so it sounds like uh, there's intent to maintain that. We can certainly fit street appropriate trees in that grass buffer and then even extending maybe a foot or so into the sidewalk, as I mentioned, as long as we have that three foot passable um, in those uh, pinched areas. We uh, plan to install new trees and any area where we need to remove existing trees. Great, thank you, Amy. Um, let's see, and I think I will go, um, I'll go back to the hands. There's just a few hands left here. Uh, so I noticed, I um, just so you know, Dan, I, I don't know if you wanna hit people who haven't had a chance to ask a question oh, sure. first. Um, that's a good idea. So I think um, we'll go to Keith next. Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I'm Keith Schnebley and I'm on the tree committee. So you probably <laughs> tell what my bias is and what I'm interested in as well. But I do wanna mention, and actually a couple of my questions, I think you addressed during Eliza's questions as well. So I just have a couple of clarifying points around okay. that. Um, but I do want to say I, I'm very impressed, actually, so far. You guys have very well thought out. You're making it very clear what the trade-offs are, how we're going to manage those. So my questions around that, I think you were getting at. So maybe I can just clarify. The ADA sidewalk says five feet. You can go to three feet. And you can do that for trees as well, I guess, as long as there people can get by on either side of them, right? Things still pass on either side. Um, and the grass buffer is only two feet. Is that the standard that we're talking about? There are a lot of areas where it's currently as low as a foot or uh, about 18 inches. We recommend that the minimum be two feet. And we had actually discussed that with DPW. They would like to yeah. see those two feet. Yeah, so we were looking at the two feet um, without having uh, more significant right-of-way impacts. That's about all we can get because it's a 40-foot right-of-way. Uh, so if we come on either side, you look at the five foot sidewalk, the two foot buffer, you've got the curb that's seven and a half feet on each side, leaves you with a 25 foot roadway. Okay, so just one more thing. It's interesting. So we're still at least two years away from starting construction. And we, you know, as part of the tree committee in the town is routinely planting along that time, it'd be really good if we could sort of keep in touch with what this plan is. So if we plant in this area, we're not gonna get impacted by the construction as well. Mm -hmm. And it does look like there's opportunity to plant in that area as well um, between now and then. So, and thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, and now I'll go to Susan. Um, let's see, my video, oh, okay. Um, can I, can I start my video? I guess not. I could see you earlier, but uh, we can hear you at, at least. Um, I'm also on the tree committee, Susan Stamps. Um, I live in East Arlington where it's flat. And I walked the uh, project site a couple of days ago and what a beautiful area of town. I wish I lived there, honestly. And one of the first things I noticed about it was how many trees there are and the shade is wonderful. And um, I it's pretty tragic to be taking down all those um, trees. We, um, my, my friend and I who were walking it estimated the size of the trees as we were walking along, there are eight of them. And um, they range in size from 15 inches to 20, to 25 to 36 to 50. These are big old trees that provide a lot of shade. Um, it would be kind of a, an ironic tragedy to have trees taken down and nice sidewalks put in, and but nobody wants to walk there because it's really not pleasant to walk along those, um, those barren streets. So I would like to see, and I, and I appreciate you have shown sensitivity about the trees and I appreciate that. And we wanted to hear what people thought about the impact of trees. Um, 
And my suggestion, I have a couple of specific suggestions. One would be that, um, Amy, that the thought you had about Mount Nav, making it one way, that would save those two nice trees that are slated to come down. And, and that's pretty much the only shade I noticed on the, that road. And so I think that would be really great to do it that way. Um, also, the other area that um, we particularly noticed, and again, I'm not, I'm really, I had never walked this area before, so it was along Hemlock. Um, that's where these two big, huge trees were, a 50 inch, I think you've mentioned this tree before. I think you should. Yeah, I think you might be looking at these two I've got up on the screen. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's probably 150 years old. And, um, and then the one right down the street from it on the same block is 36 inches. Well, again, we estimated these, but it just seems that now Arlington is known throughout the state as being a leader on climate change uh, planning. And trees are an integral part of climate change planning because they take up tons of carbon, they clean the air, they respirate moist air that makes people feel good. Um, they help control storm water. We could go on and on. So um, it would be really sad to lose any more trees that are absolutely necessary. And on that block where that those two huge linden trees are, the 50 inch and the 36 inch, mm -hmm. um, right across the street is what seems like a perfectly good sidewalk. So I'm not clear as to why you would have to take down these old granddaddy trees. For, I, I don't know why they're coming down. And um, I do notice the utility poles are on the other side of the street and maybe that's why it's, it makes it more complicated. But I would argue that um, weighing the environmental cost of losing the trees versus the monetary cost of having to um, replace the utility poles or whatever you have to do, I don't know why you made that decision it's more important to save the trees. And um, I think that was, um, yeah, that was just generally, I, I would like to see trees made a, a very high priority for the benefit of the neighborhood and the benefit of Arlington as a whole. We are still, even though we're planting a lot of trees and we're making builders pay for trees that they cut down, we're still, we still have a net loss. Right. So. Thank you very right. much. I appreciate it. We that. certainly appreciate that. I will point out one more time, the, the thing that gets tricky if we eliminate sidewalk on the east side or the extent of sidewalk eliminated on the east side, we have to create more crosswalks and crossings across Hemlock. So you're just having some um, trade off there where you're having more areas where pedestrians have to cross Hemlock as opposed to continuing along Hemlock. Um, so we are considering that as we move forward. Dan, did you have any more written comments or should we take, it looks like Stuart has one more. We've, I, I have, um, I mean, it's a lot of comments and questions chatted to me that are from um, some of the same people who have made comments already. But um, so I think one, of, so let me, I'm looking at some of these. Uh, I think there's a good question um, that I think we, we talked about when we were in the field. It's, um, Paul asks, will Pine Street be narrowed at Hemlock and will a stop sign be added as it's a very large crosswalk and cars don't stop when turning uh, onto Hemlock from Pine Street? Yep, so we were looking um, the east side or the south side, as I mentioned, this is kind of rotated, but um, this side, it's hard to extend the radius of there's a driveway right on the corner there that we have to make sure we maintain access to. Um, there's also the wall on the left side. So we are looking at narrowing this some um, to choke up the Pine Street approach a little bit. We also really want to shorten this crosswalk. So what we proposed was actually wrapping the sidewalk around the corner here. Um, we'll provide space for one car length at the stop bar. So that way if someone's waiting to pull on the hemlock, they're not blocking the crosswalk itself. Uh, and then put the crosswalk at a position that makes it a more direct movement. Um, a shorter crossing point gets it a little bit um, more protected there. And we are able to choke up that intersection a little bit, but not quite as much as we'd like to, uh, unless we pretty drastically alter the driveway here and the access to that residence. Yeah, 
thank you. Yeah, that's, that's a tough, tough intersection. Um, uh, let me see here. Um, so I know, uh, Stuart, you got your hand up and I know you had asked a question. Do you want to ask uh, your question just live here or do you want me to read it? <laughs> um, you could read it, it's, that would be fine. Okay, so um, he was just asking at Hemlock Street slash Dixon, does the plan indicate a yield or stop sign on Hemlock before it continues going down the hill? So I guess, is there some intersection control planned for there? So the way we've um, proposed realigning this, we had a stop control on Hemlock coming south. Um, Hemlock to Dixon, the curve there, uh, would have a through movement. Yeah, and, and I think we would talked a little bit earlier about sort of the, um, the that curve and the radius. Yeah, which one has the um, higher volume and that, that is actually a pretty tight radius. So we'll probably um, put some speed advisory signs in that area. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so I think I don't see anybody's hands up. There is um, some people have less comments, some people have less questions. So let me just go down and look through a few more questions. I think, um, let, me, let me check on this one. Uh, Amy is asking, will the school zone signage be extended out for the stretch of Dixon between Pheasant and Mountain, essentially the block that the school is on? I'm, I'm not terribly familiar with some of the school zone requirements, but I don't know, Amy, if you can speak to a school zone. Yeah, I was going to say, as we extend the sidewalk network, um, this certainly becomes a more highly activated part of the school zone. So we will be looking at where the signage is today. <laughs> Um, and move it as appropriate to make sure it covers that, that primary walkable movement that we're trying to accommodate. Okay, so there was um, a comment here about uh, property at 91 Dixon. Uh, it's more of a comment, so we will definitely capture that again with the chat messages are being um, recorded here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Okay, so I know Elizabeth has your hand up. I know you asked a few questions in the chat. So uh, do you want to just go ahead? Yeah, truly, it's just, this is the chat's just notes for other things that you might want to consider and pass on to the engineers in terms of the okay. um, things that are in the road. The question is, in there is also a lot of underground. The gas line goes right under there, as well as some other underground utilities. And I just wanted to make sure. I'm sure you guys already had that in your plan and already taken it uh, taking into account. But um, again, that's that space that's coming up the intersection of Hemlock and Dixon. The gas line goes right up there. A water line is there um, and some other things uh, where that fire hydrant is. So just if you're digging there, there's a gas line that is problematic. <laughs> just wanted to make sure you know. Right. Certainly appreciate the comment. Our surveyors did capture the utilities in the area. Um, so as we move forward with more, particularly the curb line readjustments in particular areas, uh, that will be reviewed. Um, and then the uh, initial submission to MassDOT, the 25% that we're wrapping up for next month, will have a utility coordination meeting. So the um, owners of all the utilities in the area will do a walkthrough as well with us to see if they perceive any uh, anticipated impacts. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's see. Um, I think we're, we're Things are slowing down, so I think we're getting um, towards the end here. Um, I do want to recognize, I got a chat from um, Montserrat about, uh, again, about sort of Washington Street and, and some other issues in the neighborhood. Oops, uh, let's see. So I'm just going to go down and see if there's any other, let's see. Um, so yes, any, any comments, you know, again, recorded in the chat. And, and I think the last question I see here is from uh, Lydia. Let's see. Has there been any observation done as to which side of the street pedestrians actually travel on? I live on the west side of Hemlock. And I don't observe families traveling on the east side uh, between Brattle and Lansdowne, especially since the east side sidewalk stops after Lansdowne. So that probably lends itself to the build it and they shall come. Um, when we did our observations, we saw people crossing um, certainly from York C. Knowles Farm, Janet Road, um, 
and Lansdowne to get to the west side, and then they walked up the west side. Um, we observed several families with dogs, with strollers, um, kids walking bicycles. So there, there's definitely use out there. Uh, it does seem like people are not stray walking. They are getting themselves to the nearest available sidewalk and walking along that as much as they can. Um, but we think if it were extended along the east side, people would utilize that as well. Great, thank you. Um, and then just want to recognize that there is, um, you know, definitely fair, a lot of support for preserving the trees where we can. So um, thank you very much for that. Um, I think I don't see any more chats. I don't know, did um, Amy or Tim, did you receive anything directly to you? I guess it nothing all directly to me. to me. Okay, <laughs> I guess it all came to me. Okay. Um, I apologize. <laughs> I didn't have my open because I was sharing, um, but yeah, I that's okay. To okay, they may have sent them to you as well. I'm just seeing if it was something we already covered. Yeah, someone mentioned the fire hydrant and the uh, utility pole specifically. Okay, and then I just got and then the compliment. Okay, yeah, great. And then uh, and then another um, comment from Tom, just uh, again supporting putting the. Um, sidewalk on the school side of Mountain Ave, if, if that's possible, if, if we can work through that. Um, so I think that's everything. Thank you. Um, we're getting pretty close to the end of the meeting at any rate. Um, and I will just answer this last question that just came in about the minimum width for parking. I guess um, usually if we're marking parking lanes out, like on the street, uh, usually do seven or eight feet width, um, like on Mass Ave, for example, in the center. Um, they're, they're usually either seven or eight feet. I think on like a local street like this, um, I mean, that that's still, I think, sort of the minimum you'd expect for the width of a, just simply to uh, the width of a vehicle. Um, but is that generally what you're looking at, Amy, when you're, you're looking at whether parking is sort of oh, possible or not? Interesting, yeah. Um... That's and I kind of commented about that previously. There's no official parking lane. Uh, so this road is about 24 to 26 feet wide, hemlock, um, and parking is not prohibited. So technically, parking is allowed on either side, although there isn't truly width for it. And I think that was the, um, the conversation that we've had so far with the DPW and the fire department was if we went any narrower than 24 they would certainly want to see uh, parking prohibited. They would want signage that parking is truly prohibited in that stretch. Great, thank you. All right, so uh, I will think we're going to move on to close out now. So uh, really, thank you everyone for those questions, and I think there's some really good questions, and um, I hope everyone's um, gotten um, a better idea of the project and what's what's happening, um, and. Um, Moving on to this more project information. So as part of this, we've also, uh, again, working with MassDOT and their other consultant, they've created this uh, sort of um, project information page. They call it a story map, where essentially you can sort of scroll down through a page and look at different maps and also um, some of the information that we've already shared here tonight, including the 2019 um, information about how many children were walking to school um, that we got from that data collection effort. And um, also the materials, like some of the, the, um, the preliminary documents, you know, that Amy has shared here. So all of these, so I, I think um, Amy or Tim, if you can share this uh, link in the chat, I, you can't really click on it here, but um, this will go out. Um, I can send it to everyone who registered for this meeting and there is at the very, once you get through everything, um, at the very bottom of the page, there's a comment form. Well, first th first is the survey that asks some specific questions. And then there's a comment form where you can leave like a more long form type of comment. Um, they're two separate things. So you can do either um, if you want, but it would be great if uh, you want to do both. Um, because again, the, the, the survey sort of asks more about preference, about how concerned you are about, say, like parking impacts or tree impacts and so on. And so we can get some more information through there. So we will share those through the uh, town's website um, on Friday um, 
excuse me, after the holiday tomorrow. Um, and then you can also sign up for updates about the project. You can put in your email address and MassDOT will collect that and they can send out project updates. Uh, you don't have to, um, to, to get into the, to see the page and everything. You can enter anonymously if you want. You just, I think would need to put in your zip code. So they do collect some information like that. Uh, so I think that's all. And then on the next page, I think Amy, you talk about the schedule. Yep, thanks Dan. All right, uh, I see Tim has shared both of those links, one for the um, Pima story map and one for a direct link to the survey. Um, so feel free to pull those, click on those from the chat before we close out the meeting. And the last thing uh, we wanted to go through was just a quick um, explanation of the schedule. I touched on this a little bit earlier as far as when construction starts, but um, to let you guys know, the 25% design is due to MassDOT uh, coming up next month. Following that, MassDOT will review. Uh, they'll give us any comments they have, and then they will host a design public hearing. So that will be an opportunity for everybody who came tonight and you know anyone else you want to tell uh, about the project and the meetings, another opportunity for you to give us feedback. Um, we'll go over a presentation of what the official 25% design is at that point, and then uh, garner more input to see how things should continue to progress um, if the public uh, appreciates the approach we've taken, we can go from there. Um, the project is set to advertise at the end of 2023 with construction starting spring 2024, and it is anticipated construction will uh, definitely take all of 2024 and likely extend a little bit, at least into the spring of 2025. So that was the last thing we had to cover. We certainly appreciate everybody's attendance, your time, your input, um, well thought out questions, definitely. Yeah, thank you. And thank um, Principal Hannah for coming and, and everyone for attending. And uh, thank you very much. Certainly, uh, I think my information, contact information is on all the public engagement. So certainly if you have any more questions, please let me know. Um, and with that, I think we'll end the meeting. Uh, thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank you.